Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is James White, Chief Technology Officer at Calypso AI. James, thanks so much for joining me. Um, thanks so much for having me, Brittany. Love to be here. We have a really interesting conversation today that I would love to get your perspective on because McDonald's is reportedly integrating artificial intelligence into its 43,000 locations. And the revamp will be complete with, quote, internet connected kitchen equipment, artificial intelligence enabled drive throughs and AI powered tools for managers, according to reporting from The Wall Street Journal. As someone who's an expert in the AI space, what's your reaction to the news? My initial reaction is that it's great. It's great to see a company like McDonald's that is so large globally and expanding into their um, like digital future with AI technology. It's a company that um, operates obviously in two spaces, digital and analog, and they have a huge presence in, in the real world with, with brick and mortar locations all over the US and globally. So it's fantastic to see them embrace AI and the use cases they're targeting really seem like an app usage for AI. And the McDonald's CIO told the Wall Street Journal that this shift is due because the restaurants are pretty stressful. It's a fast paced environment. Also, there's things like there's the running joke that the ice cream machine in McDonald's is always broken and they want to alleviate that. They want to fix that problem. And I think that this brings up a larger conversation in AI about the pros and cons of this paradigm shift to the technology. Pros obviously being it can help alleviate stress like McDonald's is trying to do. They want things faster and more accurate. Cons can be some people think that, hey, my job might be replaced with a technology, as well as there are opening a, a host of cybersecurity concerns if you use AI. So as someone who's the cybersecurity expert when it comes to AI, when you hear the news about McDonald's from the security lens, what are you thinking? Yeah, I guess the, the very first thing is that thinking through the um, app to use cases is the first. So is AI the right solution for the problem? And if it is, then how do we provide that safety and security? So there are a couple of use cases that McDonald's are uh, approaching. One is bringing in um, IoT sensors into their devices in the in each uh, retail outlet. And that's really interesting because it can help identify things ahead of time, like if a McFlurry machine is about to, to go on the blink or something like that. Or also things like identifying spikes that happen weekly. Maybe it's right after school gets out, there's a spike in McFlurries or something like that. Um, but then you have to understand what that data, if it's not protected, can help um, you know, ne'er do wells uh, use that for, for for malicious purposes. So, for example, if you knew when a store was getting its deliveries, that's a, a, a prime time where you could, um, you know, commit theft or something like that. Or if there is a um, a device that is particularly uh, well used and get to this, the supply chain of that device to, um, you know, somehow manipulate that device in some way. That's another way you can identify where chains are using. Um, machinery in, in what areas and how they can be impacted. But the use cases where they're using generative AI um, are very, very interesting. So one of the purported use cases is to um, automate the bureaucracy that is on manager's shoulders today. So moving around shift schedules, et cetera. And that uh, obviously can be a nightmare day to day if people are out ill or if there's um, some sort of dramatic shift change that has not going to affect the rest of the staff. So introducing generative AI there is a really, really good use case. However, if it's not protected, it could um, fall under uh, attack from, you know, if, if people identify that all it requires an email to send in a, a request for a, a leave of absence or a change in shift, then that could be manipulated. Um, or uh, as we're well aware, there are things like injection attacks where you put in um, content into an email that is not visible uh, to, to the regular user but is uh, embedded in the HTML, so the complex content sent in an email these days, and that can cause impact to the generative AI system. So it has to be monitored, it has to be protected, and if those things happen, it will really will uh, realize the benefits that are intended from these use cases. I'm sure anyone who's been into a McDonald's knows just how fast paced it is. It's, a lot, it's busy, there's a lot going on. You want your food, you want it fast, you wanna be in and out. And as a customer, from a customer's perspective, I would love to get your thoughts on some AI potential questions that they could have because the McDonald's um, CIO said that they wanna implement AI in drive throughs So I'm thinking when the person's talking, they're going to be using voice AI, some technology around that. What are some secu security concerns you have about that? And then how do you fix those? 
Yeah, so I guess there's there's both security and privacy concerns. So let's go with security first. Um, when you're you know driving up to some sort of machine and you usually wait for a human being to interact with you now, and presumably it will be um, interpreted by uh, Gen AI or some other AI system, it will listen to your order and it will then um, need to do a couple of things to, to kind of build the confidence in the users. So one is to replay back and what you ordered before you say go. We don't want 7,000 you know, McNuggets ordered by accident. Um, there are other attacks like um, above and below human audible attacks. So where you play um, audio that is above or below what humans can hear, often machinery can still understand it. So someone has to leave you know, a little um, a Bluetooth speaker underneath the machine and play uh, different orders. That could have an impact without anyone hearing that um, audibly from a human perspective. On the privacy side, we've got um, if people are making orders, and you've you've probably had a lot of phone calls where the uh, automated message says this this material will be used for training uh, future staff, etc. Well, now we're in a situation where your audio, your voice, could be used to train future versions of models. So um, I'm sure companies like McDonald's, um, you know, have a great reputation, will have a really strong privacy policy and and you know tell their customers what their data will be used for, if at all. And if it's not used for anything, then it, it is something that consumers can be completely safe um, in, in their fears around their data being used or their voice being used. However, they need to understand how long data is stored for and if it's stored at all, where it's stored, what region. Are they using models that are US-based or in, in other uh, jurisdictions? These are all valid questions any consumer should have for any company offering AI interaction services with them at the point of sale. I also want to read some more reporting from the Wall Street Journal. This is what they wrote, quote, McDonald's is also exploring the use of computer vision, the form of AI behind facial recognition and store mounted cameras to determine whether orders are accurate before they're handed to customers. And as we know, facial recognition is a somewhat controversial technology. So what are some of the security concerns there? And how do you think McDonald's and other companies that use that can address them? Yeah, so I think you know, um, computer vision is the wider field, and they're they're using it to um, identify if you know a burger has been created properly before it goes out. You know, were the pickles removed? Um, does it have tomato sauce, etc.? And so those use cases are innocuous. You know, I don't think anyone's going to be too worried if if a burger is is scanned. However, where it does get a bit tricky is if you are if, if people's faces, etc., are also captured by the, the vision technology. Are those faces used um, for any purpose? Are they stored? Are they recorded? Um, and so that, this is where it gets a little bit um, murky. You can resolve these quite easily in a fashion that make, means that the camera's only ever pointed at the, the food preparation, it's never upwards, et cetera. Um, but even at that, you can still have, you know, uh, and I know this sounds funny, but you could have reflective surfaces and think stainless steel in, in kitchens that could capture people's faces, et cetera. But in the most part, um, companies are quite used to computer vision now and have understood the limitations and the optimal camera angles and things like that that can be used to reduce privacy concerns. And as I said, the McDonald's CIO said that the restaurants are a stressful place. There's a lot of people in and out. There's delivery people. There's a lot of customers wanting to get in and get out. A lot of workers behind in the kitchen and the counter. Lots going on and they want to keep it moving. In a fast-paced environment, how do you make sure even more so that AI is secure? Because there is a ton going on. Yeah, so AI is, is quite, a, as it's well reported, a GPU a intensive process. So it requires a lot of, of compute power or um, GPU power. And so um, it's important that the, each restaurant has the, the allocated power uh, necessary to power these systems. But that doesn't become a bigger problem for concern. If everyone becomes reliant on in AI for drive through or for their order uh, fulfillment, et cetera. And then something goes wrong with that system. Now you're, you're faced with a, a problem that maybe the old processes are not in place anymore. And so how do you fall back? What's a graceful fallback for, for staff in a restaurant when things go wrong? Preparing for AI systems to go wrong is just important, uh, just as important for them um, to go right. And so understanding in this situation, we hope the AI system will provide X service. Well, then if it does not, what do we do instead? Um, so I think that that critical staff training, how to coincide with AI instead of being replaced with AI, is a critical step for, for McDonald's and other companies planning on doing something similar. 
And I know that Calypso has rated different models of AI, but when it comes to cybersecurity surrounding it, what do businesses usually miss? Yeah, it's it's interesting. So I think the very first thing is they they, they forget that AI is is often just doing the normal task in an automated fashion. So whatever rules and restrictions apply to the use case um, already, they still apply. You don't get to, to move away from the, the existing laws and regulations in your sector. If you're in a highly regulated industry, um, the data that you're using could be very proprietary or um, could be specific to, to human beings, either employees or customers. And the same level of controls and access that are required pre-AI are required post-AI. We often see that the focus is on how do we secure AI as a net new, forgetting that it also holds for all of the existing use case and restrictions and requirements. And then secondly, um, we often see that, the, the, unfortunately, the whole horse is bolted. So the excitement of solving a problem with AI uh, takes over and um, the, the AI system is now in production before security is thought about. And so it's a, how do you get the genie back in the bottle type situation? Um, so luckily, custom um, defenses, if you're red teaming your models or using custom defenses, fighting fire with fire effectively, that can help even if the horse is bolted, you can put those security um, controls in place and then retrospectively secure that AI system. And you brought up some interesting points that I necessarily wouldn't think about as someone who doesn't think about AI day to day, like the reflective surfaces and things like that. And we know that McDonald's, according to reporting, is rolling this out in over 40,000 locations. So when they're doing a mass implementation like this, what do businesses really need to be thinking about? That's a really interesting point. Um, you know, the, the U.S. is a, is a, a huge uh, uh, part of the world and it has various different um, light aspects for different time zones, etc. So, you know, in one store, the artificial lighting might be different than another store. So the, the how the camera sees the image may differ. Um, we saw in casinos previously where a system was rolled out very successfully and a camera uh, failed. It would replace the camera with the newer model and that newer camera didn't work as well with the existing AI system. So there are um, environmental concerns are the biggest concern when you're rolling out anything that's either audio or um, visual um, to a specific location. Think about a um, drive through that's beside a train line or beside a, you know, a freeway or that has um, you know, one of those little beeping uh, uh, crosswalk uh, indicators uh, right beside it. They all cause the AI to, to hear and interpret those things differently. So it's critical to understand on a, on a location by location basis how the AI will behave. And for me, that's the, the most critical factor for McDonald's factor when you're, when you're rolling this out. I find conversations surrounding AI really fascinating because it really feels like the new frontier. And when you're thinking about McDonald's unveiling this in tens of thousands of locations, what do you think is the future of AI in the restaurant industry? So honestly, it's, you know, I don't know if you've seen that the TV show Bear, but uh, that really brings home the, the stress and tension in the kitchen for me. Um, so I, I believe that AI will reduce the stress and workload um, on, on staff in restaurants. And um, a lot of, you know, speculation on replacing jobs. Well, I think it, it creates a much more harmonious environment for everyone to work in. A lot of the mundane tasks are taken care of automatically by, by AI systems. And often before the human being realizes it needs to happen. So, um, you know, if, if the ingredients for a specific menu item are not in stock, and that's been identified by an AI vision system and it's been ordered, you might come into work the next day and you find the delivery sitting there waiting for you. And that reduces your stress for the rest of the day. Or you've got a repeat customer and that we know that they have allergies. You don't have to ask that customer every time. You already have that list of allergies, which reduces the uh, propensity for you to accidentally give them something they shouldn't have. And also it's a nicer experience for the, the customer, right? They come in and they feel like you remembered as a human being, really AI is remembered in the background just informed you. I think if you've ever worked in a kitchen, if you ever were a busser or a waiter or waitress, you know just how stressful those environments are. I know I certainly do. And I I find it, I think people will be excited by the possibility of alleviating some of that stress. James White, thank you so much for the conversation. You are welcome back anytime. Thanks so much, Brittany. Really enjoyed it. It's my pleasure.